Another exemption is what we talked about is the HOPA, the HOPA people. That is not a family violation. It's an age thing. They have to be over 55 or 80% of them have to be over the age of 55. Even though it may be your child, it is not a violation against the family. It's a violation against the age. And they have declared that under this thing called HOPA. All right. <clears throat> now, there is a second law that we deal with, and it's kind of thrown in here. It's called the ADA, the Americans with Disability Act. Now, understand that this is not really a housing act per se. It is more of a consumer and employer act, but because we in our business of housing deal with employees working at my company and we deal with consumers, we get brought into the ADA and there are two titles or articles or sections, however you want to look at it, they call them titles. There are two of them that we really need to be cognizant of. Title one covers the employer making reasonable accommodations for their employees with disability. Now, I want to stress that reasonable accommodations. It is not absolute. There is a financial burden that maybe I cannot do. I owned a three-story building years ago in downtown Indianapolis, Indiana. It did not have an elevator. Well, that is problematic in today's world. And I had an exemption because the cost to put an elevator in a building that A, didn't have one in it, and B, to dug, dig out the tunnel for the elevator pit or put it on the roof was too financially burdensome that I got an exemption from Title I of the ADA, or well, I got an Americans with Disability Act exemption, not specifically just Title I, because there's some other things. So Title I says I must provide reasonable accommodations. I can't afford to do all of it. Title III is the second one that's involved with us. This deals with the access of public goods and services by the consumer. This would be the elevator that I was just talking about. None of these people could actually go to the second floor if they were handicapped in a wheelchair because we had no elevator. The curb cut on the sidewalk that allows someone to go down the curb and back up without having to go over it. That might be a Title III issue. So those are the ADA issues, all right? So there are companies like a property management company or a real estate brokerage company that may have both of these. You've got fair housing issues because housing is our gig, right? But I have an office and people that are living in my rentals come into my office to make their monthly rent payment. I would also have Title I issues because I've got an employee sitting in there who may have a disability, so I've got to have grab bars in the bathroom. i got to have a lower desk, maybe the TTY phone. And then I've got Title III because the consumer is coming in and they need to get down the stairs or up the stairs or on the curb or special parking to get into my office to pay the rent. So there are some companies like us that may end up dealing with multiple, uh, both the fair housing and both the ADA, okay? Now, like Walmart, they have ADA issues, but they will, may not have fair housing. That's not their gig. They sell widgets, okay? Now, when it comes to fair housing, there are some issues that have been in place for years, and some of them, unfortunately, are still around. So the first thing I want to talk about is this thing called blockbusting. Blockbusting is when a person would induce a panic sale. 
and sometimes you hear the word called panic selling, all right? Panic selling is when you create some sort of panic so that the seller wants to get out. A good example might be is, hey man, did you hear the airport? Yeah, the airport bought your neighbor's house and your house is going to lose value because the airport's going to be right in your backyard. That would be panic selling. If you used one of the protected classes for panic selling, the special term they used for that was called blockbusting. In the 50s, they called this the white flight. People were going into uh, neighborhoods and going, hey, man, the so-and-so people are going to be moving in. That's going to lower the value of your house. You probably should move out right now. And, oh, by the way, I happen to have cash on me to buy the property. So it was almost always money incentive driven, but it was an illegal form of panic selling called blockbusting. Steering is when you channel a home buyer towards an area or away from an area based on one of those seven protected classes. Even if they ask and you think you're right. I had a client that came in to me and said, hey, look, <clears throat> I don't speak English. I want to live in an area that is Hispanic. Now, I'm bilingual. I speak Spanish. So I was talking to him and he said, I want to live with the other English or Spanish speaking people. So I told him where we're going to go. I said, great, we need to go to this area of town. This was my, believe it or not, my second day with my license. So it's been a long, long time ago. He said, okay, I want to go get my wife. We'll come back and talk to you. So when he left, my managing broker at the time stepped up and goes, Raymond, what are you doing? I said, well, I've got a client and he wants to go find property. He's like, no, dude, you're steering. I said, but he asked me, I don't care. You used one of the seven protected classes, namely his national origin and or his race, to guide him towards an area. So when this guy came back in, he's like, hola, I'm like, como te va? He's, he, Andy came out and said, look, we can't do this. You need to go to the Hispanic consulate and figure out and do your own statistics. So a couple of weeks later, he came back in and said, hey, I want to I want to go to this area of the city. And I turned to my boss and went, ta-da, because it was the area that I named. But the fact is, he gave me now a geographic region, which we can discriminate on. People do that all the time. I want to live in the water. I want to live on the north side. What I did was try to steer him towards a specific area based on my intellect, and that is called steering. And I know what you're thinking, even if you're trying to help, all right? So we told him, dude, you go do your own statistics, do your own study, do your own research, come back and tell me where, which is exactly what happened. Now, here's another one that I have trouble with. The advertising law. The advertising law is a problem. Once again, I am going to read something out of the book that says uh, advertising in a Korean language newspaper only tends to discriminate against non-Koreans. Well, duh. So the first question of the day is, what's the official language of the United States? Somebody tell me. Go ahead, type it in the text, send me an email, and I'll tell you right now. There is none. We don't have one. The United States does not have an official language. It just so happens that most of the people that landed here first spoke English. Therefore, we spoke, speak English. But it is not our official language. So, in that example, advertising in a language indicates a preference or a limitation that's discriminatory against one population or another, and you're using that target to exclude others. I personally know, personally, at least six people that don't speak English. 
So even if I put an ad in the yard in English, it technically violates this rule. You cannot not violate this rule, all right? I know there's an agent on the west side of Indianapolis who puts all her stuff in the uh, Spanish language. I get what she's doing. She is helping a underserved community. Or on the south side in the Burmese language. I've seen for sale signs in Burmese. I get what they're doing. I understand the warm and fuzzy of trying to help one of these, what Wells Fargo calls them, the emerging markets. The Indian market, the Burmese market, and the Hispanic market. That's what Wells Fargo calls their emerging markets. I get it. However, based on the fact of what this literally says, it is actually a violation of the fair housing. Even doing it in English technically violates this rule because there are people that would be excluded because they do not speak that language. So once again, this is one of those where it's a warm fuzzy and we all feel good by saying, well, we don't discriminate, but technically under this definition you do. Unless you're putting the ad in the German newspaper, the Hispanic newspaper, the Japanese newspaper, the English newspaper, all of the languages, which we know is asinine that you can't even come close to doing, technically would violate this rule. When an appraiser appraises property, he cannot use one of those protected classes to influence the value of the property. He can't say, well, you know, if this would have been in this neighborhood, it would have been 100 grand more. This next one, actually, uh, I think Wells Fargo just got caught with this several years ago. It's called redlining. And literally what would happen is, let's uh, clear this out so we can see. Redlining is where they would take a map, literally with a red marker, and go, okay, do not do loans inside of that circle because of the so-and-so people or because of the so-and-so issues or whatever. That would be redlining. And a lot of insurance companies have tried this and a lot of mortgage companies have said, hey, people inside of that red line don't have a high enough credit score, so do not make loans to them. That is a huge violation. Matter of fact, in the lending world, there's actually a second violation called reverse redlining where you would target specifically people in here because they have no other choice. So what they were doing was actually adding a bunch of fees to those loans just to make a whole bunch of money because the people inside of that red line had no other choice. So lenders actually had a thing called reverse redlining as well, all right? Letter F is exactly what I was mentioning earlier. This is an effects law that there could be some discrimination even without the intent to do that. So there is an effects law that gets applied, but the reality is it's not an intent rule. 